Today's episode of the Conversation Havers podcast is brought to you by Clearwater Pressure Wash. Um, They're a pressure washing company in the League City in Friendswood area, and they are the best in the business in the area. They will give you an amazing, fair price for their work. Um, They do houses, driveways, sidewalks, curbs, patios, really anything you ask of them. Um... I've seen their videos on Instagram. The before and after is really amazing. It can really just revitalize the way your home or your patio looks. Um, You can find them on Instagram and Facebook at Clearwater Pressure Wash. Or you can email JesusV32 at gmail.com and get in contact with them that way. I highly recommend them and they're the official sponsor of the Conversation Havers podcast. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to the Conversation Havers podcast. My name is Trey. My name is Colin. And uh, we just saw a movie. Yeah, we, we did just see a movie. Um, it's a movie that a lot of people have been shitting on. Or, I, well, okay. I so don't, we saw Dark Phoenix. Yeah. I don't know if a lot of people have. I, I saw one review. It was Jeremy John's. And uh, he's a movie reviewer on YouTube, and he shit on it. He said it was complete garbage. Yeah. And uh, so, like, and I'm not going to lie, the trailers for this really, really did not have me excited. I I wasn't going to see it, because I was just so uninterested, like, from the trailers. Mm -hmm. Um, But to be honest, I was pleasantly surprised. I thought it was, like, it's not mind-blowing or anything like that, but it's... It's pretty damn well made. Like, I thought it was pretty good. Yeah, no. I was... It has like a 23% on Rotten Tomatoes. I don't think... Rotten Tomatoes, it's not the end all. Yeah, yeah. But like... Still. There's not too many good movies that have a 23% on Rotten Tomatoes. I mean, yeah, that's a summation of bad reviews. Yeah. And, um, I mean... Just going off of the review I watched, he was saying, like, oh, it's worse than fucking X-Men or Wolverine Origins. And it's like, Mm -hmm. I don't know how you could say that. Like, I really don't. I I understand opinions and stuff, but, like, and like I said, it's not like this is any type of mega masterpiece that's going to change your view on films or something like that. But Yeah, but it's it's not... It's not bad. Like I did not think it was bad. It's a perfectly at all. good X Men movie. It's like it's one of the better ones, to be honest. Um, I mean, I to be honest, I haven't. I didn't see First Class. I didn't see. Yeah, I haven't seen First Class, but I've seen all the other like new, um, mm-hmm. new like, timeline ones. I'd say Apocalypse is worse than this. Oh, easily. And so, I don't know. I felt like. Oh, well, okay, so we are going to do a little bit of a spoiler-free section, which yeah. is what we're doing right now. Just because we know that everyone thinks this movie is hot garbage. Or is just kind of dismissing it. Yeah. Um, but if, I mean, if you're an X-Men fan, you're probably going to see it regardless. Yeah. Uh, but you're just, if you're a superhero movie fan or just like action, you just Or just like, like a person in general who goes to movies, you know. Yeah, I guess. Uh, if you like some of the newer superhero movies, like... Um, you'll you'll get some enjoyment out of this. Yeah, so we we don't want to like spoil it just in case we can actually convince some of y'all to watch it. Yeah. But so this we'll do a brief spoiler free section. So yeah, I mean the most you can really say is there's a whole plot to it that the trailers don't tell you about. Yeah. And um, well, they hint at. Well, like I mean, all you really see is one of the characters. <clears throat> talking that you don't recognize and then it's like hmm you don't really know yeah what that is but and i mean like i said it's not some type of crazy uh it's not like holy fuck that's mind-blowing but it's like i felt like it added another dynamic to the movie and i liked it 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 definitely did it did make things a little weird with the pacing because there were two battles that i thought so there was one battle that I was like, this is the last, like, this is the end battle. You, okay, I know then, what you're like, talking about. like, I was about. like, this is the climax of the movie. And then it just... And then, like, ten minutes later, there was another battle exact. well, not exa- exactly like it, but... Yeah, it was there different. was just another big battle. But like, I remember thinking that exact same thing. It's like, all right, things are starting to wrap up. Like, I thought mm-hmm. the end was coming, and then, like, the characters 
get taken away and you're like oh all right we're still going all right yeah it's it's just the pacing is a little weird in that way mm mm-hmm. mhm but uh what i really liked about it was the character motivations obviously there's a couple movie moments movie in quotes where it's like the characters kind of overreact over shit whereas a logical person would like kind of sympathize and understand with someone's decisions yeah but like other than that i felt like i i really liked the x-men like i really liked their the way i mean in the action scenes the way they fight as a team and the Mm -hmm. way they do things like cooperatively was very cool um, yeah, I remember, I just kind of kept watching the movie, I was like, okay, when's it gonna get bad? Yeah, I was waiting for a for a turning point where it just, like, got shitty, but it never really did. Yeah, no, it, it definitely, I mean, like you said, there's some moments where you're like, okay, come on now. Clunky but, dialogue and generic, th- there's just stuff that happens that's kind of like... Very movie... Yeah. Like, the ending. Like, the ending, I felt like, was kind of, like, very... But, I mean... It was also nice. Yeah, it's a good way to solve the problem. So, like, it wasn't that big of a deal. Mm -hmm. Um, And they could have done something else with the ending and have everything get better. Well, you know they changed the ending. Oh, really? Yeah. um, They changed the original ending they shot because it was too similar to another superhero movie that had come out. Mm. I, I forgot which one. Somebody had found it. Okay. Or somebody had speculated which movie it was. But, Interesting. like, apparently they were all like, yeah, we had, we completely reshot the end because it was too similar to another movie that had come out. Okay, I guess if you're looking at it from the comics perspective, and to be honest, I haven't read the story, uh, Dark Phoenix Saga, mm-hmm. um, but I'm pretty sure in the comics, the Dark Phoenix is, like, it's not... It is like an all-consuming, like it'll destroy the universe type thing. Yeah. And uh, well, the it's movie... called like the Phoenix Force. Right? Yeah. But um, the uh, I don't know. They they did something a little bit more like movie movie-fied with it, for lack yeah. of a better term. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I I mean. I don't know how much longer we can, like, stay in the spoiler section. I really kind of want to divulge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In just a minute. But yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I will say that I did... I really enjoyed how... Well, okay, the action scenes. The action was fucking amazing. Like, like the, the action first scene, was... The first action scene that comes up... Um, I was pleasantly surprised. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then the second one that came up, I was also... uh, What I liked about it was they weren't using... It wasn't very CG. Like, there was a lot of actual shit blowing up. And, like, people actually getting thrown. And Yeah, it wasn't just like, oh, we're gonna CG giant... Okay, there was one... It it does happen, but I will say, at, at the very end, what... Magneto does with all the yeah yeah that yeah. was straight video game graphics yeah I think the worst shot was the last shot of the X Men's like house the 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 X Men school mm-hmm. the last shot it like that was looking rough that looked fucking rough but yeah but it's whatever like yeah I mean, I'm, I'm I'm used to like most Marvel movies like have CG that's like like at some point in the movie yeah yeah so it, it's not like that big of a deal but I was like oh my gosh this is like I I just I was kind of the the all of the action up before that point was pretty fucking cool yeah uh, so like at whenever it got to that point the only thing that kind of bothered me is like you know this isn't gonna work like this is doing nothing at all you're mm-hmm. kind of you, you could be restraining the person with metal because it's magneto. It's like you could be doing something else. Mm-hmm. You don't have to be trying what you're trying. Like we've, yeah. you literally just watched all of what you're fighting. Like what you're trying right now did nothing. So yeah, I don't know. Uh, but that's a very small so, like whatever. With that, um, spoiler free. Just- Rate the movie. Hmm. Um. I really don't know. Like you don't. Know. I mean, probably like. 
I don't fucking know. Like a seven point five, I guess. I don't know. Or yeah, I think because an eight makes it seem like it's like whoa. But yeah. it's like it's it's another X Men movie, and if you've seen the other ones, it's got a very similar vibe. But it's like it's really enjoyable. It's more enjoyable than Apocalypse. So yeah. like if you saw that, it's somewhere between Apocalypse and Days of Future Past. I think Days of Future Past is probably my favorite. Just oh yeah, out of all the X Men movies, besides Logan. Yeah, well, Logan is a Wolverine movie. You, like, well, yeah, but it's, I mean, it's, it's X Men. But it's, it's like it's got Professor X in it. And... That's a Wolverine movie. To I, me. Know, I know, I know, I uh, know. But as far as movies where it's the X Men cast of characters, this is. Uh, I mean, I think Days of Future Past is probably above it, but yeah. Uh, like not I, by too much. Yeah, yeah. I I thought this was. Um, I just thought I was so uninterested in the plot just from the trailers and stuff. But mm-hmm. I was um, all of the characters and stuff. Like I fucking I enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah. No, I would say probably six and a half to seven. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'd probably have to watch it again just to get. A, I now, felt like the I could probably pick up on some things if I saw it again, and I could probably pick up on some things that people are talking about. But still, I don't think this movie is yeah. garbage. Like I oh, just, no, it's not. I don't think no matter how many times I see this, will I think it's like absolute garbage? I'll probably watch it when it comes out on like Netflix or something like that, and kind of finish mm-hmm. my opinion yeah, on yeah. it. You know, I'm I'm one of those people I think you always need to see a movie twice before you can form an opinion. Yeah, definitely. Like I, I get that feeling the most with like albums. Like I have to listen oh, to yeah. an album like four times before I can even tell you what I really, really think. Cause like a lot of times albums sound different. Like way different from I'll get like different vibes. Like I've had albums that I thought were kinda like had like creepy moments and then whenever I listen to them the next time it's like what this is super blissful I don't know what I was thinking yeah but this is not an album it's a movie yeah no so I'd say for right now I'm gonna stick with like a six and a half or seven yeah I'm just gonna go with a seven or 7.5 I really enjoyed it and that's probably just because the comic book nerd in me and I I know all the relationships with these characters and I felt like I felt like the movie was pretty tightly written. Like, mm-hmm. I just, I enjoyed all the character interactions. Not all of them, but a lot of them. A lot of them. All right, you want to get into? Um, yeah, spoilers. Spoilers. Mm-hmm. So yeah, spoiler alert. Uh yeah, but yeah, before we go into it, just if you're interested or what, or you're not sure, I think it's worth seeing. If you yeah. like the X Men or superhero movies and shit, I think it's worth seeing. Yeah, okay. So, spoilers. Mystique dies. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, Mystique <laughs> dies. And guess who kills her? Uh, Deadpool. Deadpool yes, fucking Deadpool comes from... into the movie and shoots I was bitch. thinking about that for a little bit. Not that Deadpool would kill anybody, but like. He wouldn't. He's in the there's... same. He, I know they're not gonna ma- he's not going to make an Well, appearance. he's not even Deadpool at this time. In 1992. Oh, you're right. He's not even Deadpool. You're right. So, like, he's just Ryan Reynolds somewhere. That is that is true. Good point. Yeah. I forget that this movie takes place in 1992. Which I think is funny because I'm pretty sure Age of Apocalypse took place in the 80s. And now it's like... Well, that's intentionally. They go... They were in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. Yeah, yeah. No, I know. It's just... It's funny that none of the characters have aged at all. Yeah, no. Uh, like... <laughs> um, I guess it could have been like 89 in the last one. Yeah. Know? So like... Like that could Beast work. is supposed to be like this grizzled veteran, but like... Well, he's name? been in this bitch since oh the 60s. Oh my god, my phone will not stop fucking vibrating. <laughs> I apologize, he's, everybody. He's been he's been in this shit since the '60s, Beast. Yeah, no, he has. But so what I was gonna say is that he's talking to Mystique in that one scene, and he's like, "Yeah, we've been in this for a while now. The last of the first class." And it's like, dude's name is uh, Nicholas Holt, right? Yeah, yeah. Dude has the baby face of all baby faces. Like, I mean, not really. I don't yeah, see he a does. baby face. He really does. Like, mm. he, he looks like he's, like, mm, I think he's, like, He 30. does look young, but, yeah, he looks 30, like. But, like, I mean, he looks like he's, like, 25. He, yeah. 
He he's, and he looks he's like yeah, you know he's like supposed to be in like his fifties in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like yeah, I guess that's true. I mean, at, at some point in your brain, you've just got to be like, all right, get over it. It's, yeah, it's a plot the, hole. The way like, you gotta look in this fucking series, you cannot hold to continuity and be like, well, what about this? It's yeah. like fuck it. Every movie is its own vignette, pretty much. Like you have to look at everything. Just yeah. Like, I guess, like, X-Men 1, 2, and 3 actually kind of fit together, but they introduce plot elements that contradict other movies, but Mm -hmm. it's like, if you just watch the movies singularly, it works. Yeah, and one thing I've been wanting to say about, like, or that I've been thinking to say is that I think the biggest reason that Dark Phoenix got a 23% on Rotten Tomatoes is because the Marvel Cinematic Universe exists. Hmm. I mean, I think if this movie came out 10, 12 years ago, it would be a lot better reviewed. I think that's true, but also, I, I mean, I mean, Marvel's just set the standard so high. Yeah, but I hope movie these... reviewers aren't reviewing movies in that way. That I mean, would be I hope very so, dishonest and fucking. I mean, stupid. watching this movie, I can't think of a way that it would get a twenty three percent besides just like. Well, like disappointment it, with the greater universe. Like calling it absolute garbage is like what? Like that yeah. just makes like even comparing it to a uh, to X Men or Wolverine Origins is like fucking like ridiculous. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let all right. Let's like take. Let's go through the plot, kind of. Yeah. So I mean, it starts you. out. They're going up to space. On well, the... well, it starts out with Jean Grey and her parents in a car. Okay. Yeah, that's true. And they they're driving down the road, and immediately you know it's a setup. You know they're about to get in a car crash. Like I could just tell. It's yeah. like, oh yeah, her parents are about to die. Um, so yeah, that happens, and that kind of sets up the fact that she has trauma and all that. Yeah. And the whole movie is based around or I mean the con- the conflict is kind of a dual point of like her getting the phoenix, which is this uncontrollable or fuck, <laughs> we got to go through the plot for that to make sense, but like so it cuts to modern times after Charles Xavier kind of adopts Jean Grey after her parents get killed in the first scene. Yeah. Then it cuts to 1992 and the X-Men are going up into space because there's astronauts who are in the, danger. The Phoenix Force is like kind of fucked up the shuttle launch. Yeah, well, yeah, and they're kind of spinning out in space and the X-Men go up there to save them. And, uh, I thought that was a really cool scene. Dude, no, that was like, the first scene that kind of perked my ears up. I was like, or perked my eyes, I guess. But yeah. I was just like, hmm. Like, yeah, because, like there was a lot of genuine suspense in it. Like, yeah, well, and the way they did it, like the action in mm-hmm. between it, like the way. So what happens is all of the different team members, like I told Colin, I was like, what the fuck? They brought Cyclops up there. And yeah. I was like, what the fuck is Cyclops about to do? Like he literally has laser beam eyes like they're trying to save astronauts out of a space shuttle in space like how much can he do mm-hmm. uh, And the, but they found a little thing yeah, for no, him to he, do everyone was useful yeah and everyone played except a part except Mystique but Mystique mm. was like the leader yeah she was there for just talking everyone through it because yeah. she is older than all of them so like mm-hmm. that, that was my exact thought for that I was like well what the fuck is she gonna do change into somebody <laughs> else um but so like but the way that um nightcrawler and quicksilver he like teleports him in and then yeah. in a split second he gets all the astronauts kind of like grabs them and gets them to touch nightcrawler and then nightcrawler goes back with all in the span of like a second so it's like shit like that i like the synergy that they played off of each other with and it they was really do cool. that throughout the movie yeah with every action scene they do that all of the different members they'll be like yo help that person and then they'll do their power and then it's like especially this movie does some dope ass psychic shit it's small but mm-hmm. like there's a part where gene gray's in a bar and it's just an old man and i thought it was just another mutant like i thought he was mm-hmm. going to be some other mutant uh but then so jessica chastain uh her it, character which you never really learn her name yeah she's alien bad guy by the way mm-hmm. so i i said this to you during the movie 
Those have to be scrolls. They're not. It's just fucking the, shape shifting aliens. The, they're shape shifting aliens, though. Yeah, is the whatever. point? Whatever. They don't look like Fox, scrolls, and it okay, doesn't say anything. Okay, but Fox owns the right to scrolls. The, people would people that don't know about all the legal who owns what and shit would be like, "What not that in a Marvel movie?" If they use like the same design, well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. They're not using the same design as scrolls, but like as like the scrolls. Fuck it. In they Marvel. they're this universe's scrolls if you want them to be. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not like passionate about like they have to be scrolls. I'm just saying like they never said that they were scrolls, but I'm pretty sure those were scrolls. Like fuck it, they're scrolls. <laughs> but um. The, the, the part that I was talking about is she's in a bar and it's an old man and he's like flipping channels with his mind in the bar and the bartender's like trying to change it and then the alien comes up and then it like someone like walks by the camera and you see it's Jean Grey and it's like mm-hmm. oh you she's making everyone see her as an old man and it's like that's one of the many fucking badass psychic moments in this cause like I thought they they did a really good showcase of badass psychic shit like ever since I saw Akira I was like psychics are fucking badass like in fiction (laughs) but um alright so kind of back to like the plot plot yeah the plot (laughs) I kind of got sidetracked there um so they save the astronauts they come back from space and and they're like heroes now it's not like mm -hmm. in the other movies where there's a future past they're trying to like just destroy all mutants yeah where where everyone just hates mutants and think thinks they're bad or whatever in yeah. this the world like loves them mm-hmm. and I kind of enjoyed that and like I really wanted to like I mean the movie has to have conflict and things have to change and that's fine but like I would like to spend some time with the X-Men in some glory days where it's like they're just heroes doing badass shit stopping yeah. stopping threats like I thought that was really a good change of pace yeah then, no it was really cool to see and then Shit starts going... Yeah, shit hits the fan. Yeah, shit starts going Jean. crazy. So, like, yeah, while she's up in space, obviously, like, she, the Phoenix, Phoenix, Phoenix Force enters her, mm-hmm. and they're all like, yo, Gene, you good? Yeah, and no, Cyclo- like, Cyclops asks her, like, seven times. He's like, are you sure you're okay, Gene? Which is, Gene, I mean, the, but that's the thing about Cyclops. Gene. I thought he was a super genuine character this entire mm-hmm. movie. Like, the entire time, like, he has his girlfriend and he cares about her. And, like... Cyclops is Ty Sheridan, right? I can never tell because you can't see his eyes, but I'm pretty um, sure it is. I guess that's the actor's name. Yeah, um, it's the guy from Ready Player One. I, I guess. I, right. Doesn't matter. <laughs> doesn't matter. Um... But yeah, um, no. So he, he's genuine. It does come off as a little whiny. Cyclops always comes off as whiny, though. That's like, true. he kind of. Even in the older movies, he's like, Gene, like, me. I know. You want Why Wolverine? Won't you love me, Gene. And Wolverine's like the badass. Like, fucking, hey, I'm going to take your bitch, Cyclops. <laughs> I just fucked your bitch in some Gucci flip flops. <laughs> yes. Um, but, anyways. Yeah, so they get back, and they're checking her out. They're like, you all right? You kind of absorbed a solar flare, or what we thought was a solar flare, or yeah. some shit. Uh, but it turns out to be a fucking alien space bird of fire that will destroy the universe. Naturally. Um, yeah, pretty, it is. pretty intense. Um, they're at, like, this concert thing. Yeah, Dazzler's in the movie. I thought that was interesting. Yeah. It, like, that kind of came out of nowhere, but Dazzler's in the movie. She's an X-Men character who... She was made specifically, like, for little girls or some shit. I don't remember. But there's, like, a story behind all that Mm -hmm. where she kind of... She's a superstar, pop star type person. And she can shoot fireworks and, like, pretty much put on a concert anywhere, uh, which was interesting. But they're, like, in the woods outside of the uh, X mansion. And all the older X-Men are, like, having a little shindig. And uh, Jean Grey has a little freak out because of what? What sparked it again? Um, I think she just sees the fire and gets like overwhelmed. Yeah, there's like a campfire and she yeah. kind of, yeah. She like, has some, oh shit, fire is in me. She gets a bad uh, headache and then kind of explodes a little bit. Everything just like shockwaves away from her. Yeah. But then, so yeah, but okay, only thing I wanted to point out was like, they're not even being fucking subtle 
with the girl power in these movies anymore. Oh my god. The worst fucking <laughs> the line in the movie. The worst fucking line in the movie. Mystique is talking to Charles, which I don't understand this whatsoever. Pretty much the X-Men are their image in the world's eye is apparently fucking amazing. Everyone loves them. They they're superheroes now. And it's like good. Like isn't this what y'all wanted? Like human and mutant synchronicity yeah. like working working together. Uh, but uh, Mystique doesn't like that for some reason because she thinks it's all for Charles's ego, and it's like yeah. even if it is like it's I mean, good. <laughs> the, this is what y'all have it's wanted. It's doing a good thing. It's yeah. what y'all have wanted. Like he, oh my fucking god, that that oh, but the line she says, um, all the all the women around here save all the men. Maybe we should call the X Men the the X Women or something like that. And I was like, hmm. "Well, you turned to me. You were like, and she's referring to the space mission that just happened. And like I said, everyone had a part to play. And Storm and Mystique were the only two, or Storm, Mystique, and Jean Grey were the yeah. three women on board. Jean Grey held the spaceship together so um, they could get not, the captain to get the last person out." Nightcrawler could go in there and get him, which they do. Which, like, once again, she played her part. Yeah, no, That's she did good. a great job. But the men saved every single astronaut. There are two men that went in there. Uh, Cyclops, or not fucking Cyclops. Um, Quicksilver and Nightcrawler go in there and save, like, six. Yeah. Like, five or six astronauts. And then Nightcrawler physically saves the last one. And she says... Or, and I guess during Jean Grey saved everyone from the fire because she observed absorbed it into her. Yeah, but it's like, well, it was just but very. They're forced. not even being subtle anymore. I mean, they haven't been subtle in the last couple Marvel movies, like Infinity War or Endgame with their fucking. Well, my whole bit on that. Moment. My my whole bit on that is that like, and I think I've said this on the podcast mm-hmm. before when we talked about it, it's like, I don't really care like. That's not like it's just I'm not the into maybe a little bit, but I feel like that fucking line in X Men. Okay, yeah, no, that's cringy. That that's cringy. Cringy. Don't get me wrong. Shit. That is cringeworthy. But like in it, in Endgame, it's like I didn't mind <sighs> that just because. Well, look, it was that, that was my only thing to that. It was response. I mean, if you're like a little girl in America, I'm sure they all loved that moment. And it was 20 seconds, and it didn't significantly impact the movie in any way. And like, it's it's a very small 20 seconds. I was not the intended audience, and like, I say, if you made like a bunch of people really happy with that moment, then good on them. And if you think. If you think that that 20 seconds of that movie completely ruined no. it for you, then you've got... And I'm not talking to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard some people say this, though. They're like, oh, these movies are always pushing agendas. It's like, for 20 seconds, they made a bunch of like girls happy. And then it literally had no impact on the plot going forward besides the fact that Captain Marvel had the Infinity Gauntlet. Yeah. But that was going to happen saying, regardless of saying, whether that moment Saying that it ruins the movie for you is way too dramatic. Yeah, it's like... like I, the fuck I was talking with the guy and he was like, yeah, it just ruined it because they're pushing the agenda on us through that movie. And it's like, that's just, just stop talking. <laughs> like, I don't know. Uh, I do think it's goofy, but it, it was goofy, but mm-hmm. I but, think, I mean, it served its point. The yeah, moment in X-Men with this the, was fucking, that was just bad. Like, like, I think even if you're a feminist, you'd be like, Ooh, like what? Yeah. Like that's fucking stupid for her to say that. But, um, but yeah, so they get back, they saved all the astronauts, and then the thing happens where at the concert where Phoenix kind of yeah. overloads and like blows a bunch of people back with fire or whatever. And then Professor X tries to like go into her mind. Yeah, Professor X goes into her mind and that's where it starts getting revealed that her so like whenever the car crash happened, it killed her mom but not her dad. Yeah. And um, Professor X told Jean whenever she was young that her dad died too and that's pretty much the big conflict uh, that kind of works in tandem with her getting the Phoenix Force that makes the threat of this movie and the aliens mm-hmm. that arrive that want to 
use Jean to destroy Earth, pretty much. Yeah, uh, it's with like the Phoenix Force. That, that I guess that is another problem with the movie is that the villains aren't well developed at all. They aren't. I, at the end of the day, the con the co- main conflict is more about Jean yeah. Grey within herself than it is the aliens. But also, like the aliens are there. I guess. I think they could have, while I was watching, I thought they could have done something interesting, but I mean, maybe just for the sake of simplicity and keeping the movie tight, Mm -hmm. uh, I think the aliens, like, if they were genuine and they were like, give us the Phoenix Force so we can actually do some good shit and they were being for real, for real, because, like, you can tell they're fucking evil, you know what I mean? But, like, at the end, the whole time they're manipulating Jean, but then there's a moment where she's like... Uh, none of your lives mean anything and it's like okay like yeah whatever but um that whole point's gone but uh I don't know it's it's very cringeworthy there was a cringeworthy line at the end where she goes up and she's like your emotions make you weak and she's like no my emotions make me strong. I knew she was going to say that the oh, yeah. second that oh, Jessica yeah. Chastain said you, your emotions make and, you And that's what I meant by kind of just a, a movie ending. It's like, it's yeah. like what? how do we fix this conflict? It's like you just kind of say... It's like the villain says something and then it's like, no. And then you say no and then have a little, little line mm-hmm. and then the threat ends pretty much. Yeah. Uh, but... I, I kind of want to go like chronologically. Yeah, it's sorry, to, sorry, sorry. No, I've been fucking it up too. But um, so after she fucks up the campfire, uh, Charles Xavier tries to go into her mind, and yeah. that's when all that stuff that we talked about is revealed. To yeah, him. or she kind of gets the glimpse that her dad's still alive. She hears his voice. Is what happens. Yeah, and she goes, "Well, what the fuck." So she goes to go see him, and Charles is like, "We can't let her see him uh, mm-hmm. because she wants to have she wants to go see her dad and like I'm still alive, like whoa, and have this happy reunion." But apparently, her dad is just a shitty father and yeah. really doesn't love her because since Jean tried to change the channel on the car speaker whenever they were driving in the 70s and that's what made the mom not focus on the road and get hit yeah. or like r- have a head on head collision with another car and uh, the dad apparently hates Gene because he can tell or doesn't maybe not hate her but he just doesn't care yeah because like his wife apparently he loved his wife way more than he did his child uh, yeah which was interesting I mean, you know, that's not really like a guy. problem with the movie. That's just that character. Like yeah. that's how he I was. Mean, he, he was definitely kind of a piece of shit. Um, I mean, definitely, you should like love your daughter. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I feel um, like that's but, one of those things. Go without saying a little bit, but yeah, no. Mm-hmm. Um, but so then, she goes over there, and all this—the fact that he's a piece of shit's revealed to her, and, then and the she X-Men starts show. freaking out again. And the X Men show up. Uh, because Charles knows what will happen. And that's when Mystique gets the other point of like, oh, she can tell that he lied to her. Or mm-hmm. uh, he says he put up mental barriers in her mind. Like psychic barriers to not really access the emotions that would make her freak out. Mm-hmm. Uh, which, it's like, uh, listen, I will agree you should have told her the truth and worked that out with her. While she was young so that she could have like a better foundation you know, it's like it's always worse to hide something from someone, you know? Yeah, for sure. So he did make a mistake, but it's like, you know, dealing with another fucking psychic, maybe he has a different thought process, but they try to treat him like he's a villain. Like the mm. other characters in the movie. Well, it's really just Mystique and Beast. Yeah, them two. And, they're, and they really. I don't know. Like. Uh, Hank freaks out because Mystique gets killed in the altercation uh, yeah, that happens. So they confront her and she like kills a bunch of cops. Yeah, she and kills then... a bunch of cops and then kills Mystique, which kind of by accident, like she must have seen. I the think fucking... she more meant to like throw her out of the way. Yeah, she did like seem. She was remorseful for it. So yeah. it's like I don't think. I think it was just 
so much shit was happening. Yeah. But that was another fight scene that I really enjoyed. Like, the way that her and Nightcrawler, like, are, like, hitting through walls in a house. Like, mm-hmm. it's very fluid, and I thought the action was well done. And actual houses, like, parts of them are getting blown up. Like, it's really happening. They're not... It's not CG, which yeah. I really enjoyed. I think any type of practical effects is good. It really makes things... Also, what's interesting is that... So, okay... Two things with Quicksilver. Mm-hmm. He goes up and he tries to um, stop her. And that scene really reminded me of Injustice League when Flash tries to stop Superman. Oh. And, like, yeah. Superman, like, just kind of, like, sees looks him over. running. Like, yeah. Yeah, that part, like, but yeah. It reminded me of that a lot because she's, like, up there doing her, like, Phoenix Force things. And then, like, he's running to go stop her. And she just kind of, like, looks down and just goes, like, <laughs> yeah. He. Just, like, falls out of the way. Yeah, he gets kind of fucked up. Also, he gets yeah, thrown. he doesn't show up the rest of the movie after that. Yeah, I mean, I guess he was pretty injured and whatever. Mm-hmm. But he is... They, I think they should have kept him in because he's probably the most enjoyable Oh yeah, uh, X-Men. Like, every single appearance he's made, he's been a fan favorite. So I think yeah. they could have used him more. But he didn't get to meet... Um, well, I forget if he, got to, if he got to in previous movies, but he didn't get to meet Magneto... Because there's always been... Oh, yeah. No, he did. Well, he literally is in the elevator with him, and he goes, so you control oh, metal, right? Yeah. My but mom not, knew a guy like that. Not in, like... I don't know. I wanted them to address the fact that he's... Mm, I mean, I guess they could have, but it, it works fine without yeah. it. Um, it. It does. I just thought it would have been cool to see before like this whole universe basically wraps up yeah and i i think this is a good note to go out on it kind of and it's not like how shit ends up because shit like it's hard to tell with this universe but it's like i guess deadpool is probably the most like recent times point of Mm -hmm. the universe you know which it's interesting um well obviously this isn't like super um whatever canonical yeah. But in, I think, Deadpool 2, it's the first or the second one, he goes like, oh, it's real convenient how there's no X-Men in here. And well, then, you, like, you see them. And then, yeah. yeah, like, Professor X, like, closes the door, and you can tell that it's uh, the McAvoy universe. And even that, they're wearing the classic 90s costumes in that scene. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I, here's the thing. I'm okay with what they did with the costumes in this movie. I actually thought... Because they had a line that kind of referenced that. She was like, we're all wearing like the same uniforms now or whatever. Yeah. And it's like, I'm not going to lie, that did kind of... Um, I liked them. I thought it was cool. Just like those zip-up jackets with the big yellow X. Yeah. And it's based off the Frank Quietly and Grant Morrison run in mm-hmm. the comics, which is like really, really good. Uh, but... I do wish it's your last movie. You could have put them in the costumes for those scenes. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? But but also it's it's whatever. Yeah. Hopefully whenever Marvel whenever they if I mean I'm guessing they will, but like whenever yeah. they make their X Men films, hopefully they give them some fucking eye popping, like colorful costumes. That's what I've been wanting to see. Yeah. Because that's and yeah. I've heard rumors that X Men won't be introduced for a long time. Yeah, that's, but yeah. that we could see Deadpool in the next Spider Man movie, and that we could see a Fantastic Four movie in twenty twenty two. Yeah, I think both of those could be cool. So, but as far as like straight up X Men, I don't know. Like, that's a lot to just like spring on, you know. Yeah, definitely. They they'll they'll find some type of way. Yeah. But did you did you like the costumes in the movie or? I did. I thought. I mean, obviously, you know the ones that they tease at the end of um, Apocalypse. Yeah. I was like, okay, and then they just didn't use those. Yeah. Like, and like I said, they had a line about it. Mystique mm-hmm. and uh, Charles are like talking, and she mentions that, and it's like, that's okay. And and I did like the costumes. Like if I was an X Man, I'd I'd like to be wearing some type of simple like uniform yeah. like that. I think it's it's not. It's nothing that's too much. Yeah, yeah. I think it's cool. But so. um, but yeah. Back to like the plot. Where were we? 
<laughs> uh, um, they we were at, they fight Mystique dies yeah and then Jean Grey goes to Genosha yeah she goes to Genosha which is kind of an island or I mean they never explicitly say but it might as well be mm-hmm. uh, but in the comics it's like an island that Magneto has that's just for mutants it's like a mutant um, paradise pretty much and uh, but in this it's kind of more like a shanty town type yeah, deal it's like it's all the houses are made out of like those giant shipping containers and stuff like yeah, that yeah it's on a little house and they're like farming and stuff like that but anyways yeah. she goes to go talk to Magneto about how to like let go of anger or stop hurting people yeah um, kind of both yeah and it's like you're kind of in a different situation like Magneto just had a lot of anger. You you have a celestial... Celestial force in your yeah, soul, basically. Yeah, that's like kind of compelling you to do this and you yeah. can't control it. So, but, but I mean, it's whatever. It's better than her just sitting there and crying. Like, she did try to find a solution, which I thought was better than nothing. And yeah. always, I always enjoy Michael Fassbender as Magneto. I think... Yeah, I think one of the saddest parts about seeing, like, these X-Men... I mean, this is pretty widely regarded to be the last X-Men movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, They haven't... I don't think they've officially said it yet, but it's one of those things where it's like... It's it's presumed. Um, But, I mean, yeah, it's like a goodbye to the care... Like, Michael Fassbender as Magneto, and I always thought he was just... An amazing him, Magneto. him and uh, James McAvoy as no. Professor X. Oh, I was oh. gonna say Ian McKellen. I think is uh, the guy okay. who played the original Magneto. Like both of the castings were like awesome. I like both of the Magnetos and both of the Professor X's. Yeah, I thought. I think if we're talking about all, all four of them, McAvoy is probably the weakest. But yeah, I, I think so as well. I think, but he he serves his purpose. Yeah, I think all four of them are very good. Like. Solid. They, pre- gosh, I can't talk right now. Sorry. They portray the characters pretty solidly. Mm-hmm. You know, I think Michael Fassbender. I mean, Ian McKellen's probably the best. Fuck, that's hard to say. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna have to rewatch some they're, stuff. They're all badass. I would like to go through all the X Men movies and like watch the mm-hmm. the better ones and see everything. You know. Yeah. Uh, but because this this uh the X Men movies kind of did a huge part in starting the whole superhero. That and Spider-Man really kicked the show. Well, the first X-Men movie was really the first, I would the first modern superhero movie, I would say. Um, I mean, X-Men and then it was Spider-Man. Yeah. And then kind of like... X-2. Fantastic Four came in there for a little bit in like the late... Except that was... The late 2000s. Yeah. Fuck those movies though. Them hoes are too cheesy. Yeah. Watch the 90s. Fantastic Four movie. <laughs> that shit is fucking dope. The one that like didn't even get like yeah, fully it, released. Mm-hmm. It, it's make... a it's a B movie, but it's like that shit is fucking incredible. I I heard they made that movie for the sole purpose of like if keeping the like, rights. Yeah, they were like, if you don't make a movie with these guys, we're gonna take our rights back. And they were like, oh, we got it. And then they made <laughs> they're like they're like all right, uh, we're gonna put like three bucks towards this movie. Do what you can. It, it's, it's pretty like, fire. It's on YouTube. Like, really? if you haven't seen it, you should watch it. But um, okay. We have not made any fucking progress in the in the story. Okay, no, so... The, oh, no, she goes to Genosha. The military comes searching for her. Yeah, which, how would they know that she's there? I mean, she's just fucking flying through the sky. There's like I guess. There's sonar, radar, whatever. I guess you're right. but And it doesn't matter. But they show up, and there's kind of a... Standoff between Phoenix and Magneto. Yeah, and the military, but they don't really do shit. They yeah, just, just kind like, of we're gonna get you, and it's like you guys know you're surrounded by like fucking mutants that could like yeah. Oh, by kick the way, ass, so whenever she arrives on Genosha, there is a a mutant that talks to her, trying to like, hey, why are you here? Mm-hmm. And he has massive dreadlocks, or they're kind of like braided dreadlocks. Yeah, and I was like. But he's gonna like grow his hair out and like rope somebody with it. That's his mutant power. Uh, and I was joking, but also <laughs> That's I mean, actually like, his mutant power. Yeah, like later on, you see him and he starts fighting, and I saw him whip something, and I was like, "Was that his fucking hair?" <laughs> and then it cuts back to <laughs> him, and he's using shit. his hair as he was fighting whips um, and shit. Storm. 
Yeah, and I was just like, that is his power. That's badass. All right. He's kind of like what? Samson, <laughs> sort of. But um, maybe that's his X Men name is Samson. Probably. But um, so yeah, the military shows up and they pretty much just get them out of there. Yeah, I I really liked seeing the standoff between Magneto and Phoenix mm-hmm. the first time because like the first they they kind of have another little standoff later but the first time they look fairly evenly matched like Magneto yeah. is obviously kind of on the losing side but yeah. like he, he's holding his own well like I think immediately they, they're they both trying to she's trying to like she destroys one helicopter and then she's trying to destroy the other and he's like keeping it balanced sort mm-hmm. or like he's trying to keep it up and he, he keeps it up just for enough time for the soldiers to get back on. And then he kind of like pushes it back into the sky. Mm-hmm. And then how does she leave? Or he just kind of tells her to yeah, leave. Yeah, he's like, yeah, fuck off. We don't like you. And then she's like, oh, okay, fine. And she yeah, just she, flies away. She, yeah, she just... That's it, basically. Yeah. And then from there, that's where um, the Jessica ex- Chastain meets her at the bar. Yeah. Yeah. So and it's kind of like invasion of the body snatchers like the aliens just kind of show up and like take this one family like and just a bunch of other fucking random people yeah like a lot of them land on earth and just start snatching people and using their bodies yeah and they're they're clearly psychics or some type of they're just powerful they're kind of undefined yeah I mean they they can't it's very much like they're hard to kill and they can like shape shift mm-hmm. that's really all you know about them yeah because like it's shown that like okay like if you pump these guys up with enough bullets they'll eventually die but Did? like yeah, no, they? there was that one that died on top of the train when it got shot by the helicopter. I don't know if that was a dead... Like, I thought it was about to start showing it, like, regrow. No, he was It dead. didn't, but I guess. Uh, but, and yeah, Nightcrawler's, like, stabbing a bunch of them. Mm-hmm. And it's... Nightcrawler. Them. When Nightcrawler, Nightcrawler that dude goes dies off. in his arms, he's just like, let's go. Yeah. Sorry, that was probably really loud. Oh. Yeah, and he kind of, yeah, he goes off. He grabs, like, a bunch of different shit. Magneto has, like, some of the best moments yeah. in the train, which is later on. Yeah, uh, we can we can uh, We keep fucking... It's because, I mean, the action scenes are really where it's at. Yeah, yeah. But, um, no, from there, I mean, the, I feel like the part where Jessica Chastain's, like, trying to get her to do things, it's kind of a forgettable part of the movie. She's just like... This yeah. is the Dark Phoenix Force, and it's within you. And and we're gonna reuse it to fucking rebuild the Earth or mm-hmm. whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and she's like just trying to explain to Jean Grey like what's going on. And during that time, Beast meets up with Magneto, and they're like, he's like, yeah, bitch. we're gonna go kill Jean Grey. Yeah. So which I mean, like, y'all, we, t- <laughs> y'all have they both witnessed her power. Y'all have all. both. Like, you, you're a fucking blue gorilla man, and Magneto already kind of like Magneto's should, very powerful. Yeah, but you and should he already got his cheeks clapped. Yeah, I was about to say you. He should be able to tell the or it's Magneto's kind of like I don't want to fuck with her, and then he tells her or he tells him that she, she killed, killed Mystique. Mystique, and. That's what makes him like, oh, mm-hmm. this bitch dead. We we finna go clap her cheeks. And they go with that one weird, like, bald head chick. Yeah, she's a psychic as well. She's yeah. who sees them, I think. She's yeah. who, like, tracks them down. Um, but uh, They go with her, the dreads guy. And they, yeah, they go to New York where the aliens are, like, have Jean and they're kind of, like, talking to her. And then another fight breaks yeah. out. And then, well, also... Uh, Professor X recruits um, got Cyclops, Storm, and Nightcrawler to go to with, come him. with him. Yeah, and they have a cool little fight scene. There's a ton of moments in that yeah. where they have like synchronistic kind of yeah. team oriented helping each other out. And that happens not, like a lot. One thing I liked about that is it wasn't huge scale. Like no, it was like of, in this one little section of the street. Yeah, a lot of movie battles nowadays try and just be like these massive like earth shattering scales yeah know? most of and this the... was like they kind of destroyed half a block in the middle of manhattan magneto does pull a train out of the ground which yeah. still isn't that fantastical but it's like that part is was pretty fucking badass it's pretty dope i mean 
when you go on a scale like uh, on a smaller scale like that, mm-hmm. shit like that, Little, where Magneto's yeah. just standing, yeah. and it's like, Ugh, and like yeah. lifts a fucking train out of the ground. It's so much cooler to see than like in just some massive like CGI fest movie where they're like where something happened. It's less significant. It's it's a lot less significant. So that was cool to see. But then also Magneto just like. He pulls up the train and he brings it behind him and he locks himself in a building with Dark Phoenix, basically. Yeah, and then she kind of just claps the fuck out of him. She starts. I've come to kill you. I thought she was going to kill Magneto. I did. I thought his head was going to explode because she collapses his helmet on his face. Yeah, and I was like, damn. I I was. I, I think it would be more impactful if she did. Especially since I fucking love Michael Fassbender's Magneto, mm-hmm. I would have been like, "Damn, like this bitch really just did that." But yeah. it's whatever. She she harmed him. She gave him a couple scrapes on his face. Yeah. But uh, she she shoots him back out, and all the X Men are fighting all of the Magneto's dudes out in the street, and then they kind of uh, leave or something. No, Professor X comes in after. Oh that. yeah, okay. He, Nightcrawler brings him in, and then he's like, "Stop doing that!" And she's like, "No, walk to me." And Professor X proceeds to do the meanest thought walk I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, I, I'm not gonna lie; it would be an effective scene, but Colin started laughing really <laughs> fucking hard, and it made me laugh. Like she she breaks his wheelchair and then kind of physically makes him walk up the stairs, but he's got noodle legs. And um yeah, it's a it's a hard ass thought walk. I mean, hey, hey, you, you just walk. Me hey, like, hey. the thought walk and I was like, Oh shit, he's got the pimp step, like let's yeah. go. But she he goes up there and she's about to kill him because the alien's like, Yeah, kill the X Men. Yeah. And um but he's like, Gene, look into my brain. Like, see that I did this for you and then yeah. she does and that starts to make a difference. Uh, starts, but then she's like, "All right, I'm gonna like give you my phoenix powers." Because oh yeah, I don't want she them. yeah she starts giving the alien her phoenix powers, and I guess she just gives her half of it, like, like a little less than half, because yeah, Jean's still a lot more powerful than that other chick is. But. Yeah, but Cyclops, one of my favorite things Cyclops does, Cyclops bursts a hole in the building, and like as they're hugging, transferring, transferring the power to each other. He just, like, yeets that bitch out the fucking roof. Like, he just shoots her, and she just goes flying. And that part, I was like, good shit, Cyclops. Yeah, no, like, you, you were like, damn. And I was like, I agreed. Like, that was cool. But at the same time, I was like, that fucking works. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. She's got the Phoenix Force in her now. And obviously, as we've seen with Jean Grey, like, that shit does not mess around. I mean, that's because she's had... She just wasn't expecting it. I think if she knew yeah. he was there, Cyclops would have fucking got wrecked. But, like, it's whatever. And then from there... Uh, that's whenever they all get captured. Yeah, they get captured. And they get put on and a train. So, during the... For, from the non-spoiler part, that I thought that was the final battle. Yeah, no, that was the part like, because... Uh, that part where... Before they get onto the train, uh, mm-hmm. that whole thing that's happening where you think uh, it's making a difference and, like, Charles is getting her to, like, get back. Yeah. You know what I mean? Until, like, basically they, until the last, like, minute or two of that fight scene, you yeah, think it's the final battle. Yeah, where they start um, where they start transferring, you're like, oh, okay. Like, they're giving yeah. the villain some powers. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, I mean, I can see how a lot, some people would have some problems with the pacing with that, but I mean, I didn't, it, I didn't care that much. You get another badass fight scene yeah. after, and, yeah. So then they go to the train, mm-hmm. and they're transferring them, I don't know if it's the same mutant containment center from Deadpool. It's, oh, I've, who fucking knows, but, it's just. Like, a, they have, like, those similar, like, collars on them that limit their powers. Yeah. And, uh, but you see the aliens are waiting, uh, in a tunnel for the train yeah. to come through and they drop on top of it and there's a fuckload of them. Like, yeah, they're, well, they're not a fuck. There's like they, 20 they just, 25. They, I mean, yeah, they just kept coming. Like it was crazy. But, um, yeah. 
So the military gets wrecked whenever all the aliens start busting in the, the X-Men. one last guy is like, oh shit, X-Men, save us. Yeah, the X-Men are like, yo, you should let us out. Like, we're the only things that can help you. But mm-hmm. they don't. So, or until the last guy lets them all out. And then the fight scene starts. And that's where some of the most badass shit happens. Like, Magneto, some of the, like, the action, like... He's just, like, shoving, like, train, sharp metal yeah. train parts through aliens' faces. And it was like... Yeah. Oh, and he was just like the way Michael Fassbender was like moving his body to like enact that just made yeah. it so much cooler because like a lot of them are super quick like he just like bends his fingers and someone gets like fucked up yeah like, it's it's fucking cool no no like huge like he, props with Michael Fassbender because he I don't know how like as if I was out there I don't know how I would do it but like he he makes it so much more like believable yeah and the yeah it's pretty cool. Um, and then Nightcrawler when the last uh, guard dies in his arms because I mean the guard said like my my my, son was a fan yeah was a fan of you and he was like oh no I I don't like this I want to be the fan I want to be have fans even though he's not Russian he's like fucking something else he's French I think German no no I'm pretty sure he's His name's Kurt Wagner. I'm pretty sure he's... Okay, maybe he's German. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's German. But anyways, uh, he goes off and he's like... But they are aliens. Like, I saw him in the Jeremy Johns review. He's like, Nightcrawler's like fucking murdering people. Or I think he said that. But someone said that it's just like, what the fuck? Like, why is he going so bloodthirsty? It's like, they're aliens. Like, they have taken the body of humans. Like, I think... And they want to destroy the world, so it's like yeah, killing sure them is kind of justified. Point, kill people. Yeah, that's pretty right. justified, and but, it's badass. Uh, yeah, like, oh, he's like teleporting around, fucking people. I around. mean, him and Magneto stole the show in the oh, yeah. bus fight or in the train fight. Yeah, and Cyclops is like holding all of them, all of them off. They're like mm-hmm. coming in through the roof, and he just keeps blasting them. That that part's pretty cool. Yeah. And um, then Professor X and Jean Grey have like a conversation in their minds. Yeah. And like they're in, they go to like some it, subconscious it, room. It fully restores her <clears throat> back to understanding why he yeah. lied to her because he did it out of love for her, which yeah. fixes I'll also that say whole thing. The child actor that plays young Jean Grey, yeah. especially in that scene, was really good. Like at the yeah. beginning of the movie, she was a little questionable. Yeah. But in that scene, she did a great job. Yeah. I, she, how old was she? Probably like... I mean, I know in the movie she's eight. I bet that girl was probably ten. Yeah, probably. Just because they usually use kids that are older. Yeah. If they can. But yeah, no, she, for a fucking ten-year-old, like, mm-hmm. she she did a pretty damn good job. Yeah. Uh, but, let's see. So they kind of had that conversation, and then she, like, breaks out of her, like restraints and saves all the X-Men she like does this badass like fly through the train thing where she's just like using her hands and her the Phoenix Force to just manipulate everything oh while also like keeping all the X-Men in like those little bubbles Bubble, yeah uh, and Magneto before that has a moment where he crushes an entire train car oh yeah like all the aliens are in one of them and as they're like running towards him he just like fucking crushes that bitch and I was like that's badass. Like, Magneto has some of the best fucking moments in the X-Men series. Even oh, yeah. in Apocalypse, I think, where he's, like, on the train and he's taking a part... He's on another train. <laughs> and he's, um... He's, like, taking the fucking... The things that the trains ride on, like, rails. The rails. He's, like, taking those off and then forming them, like, in midair into shit. And, like, in the... I've read this one Magneto comic... Where he, like, uses a stop sign through someone's face, and it's it's pretty fucking crazy. Like Doesn't he lift an entire stadium in yeah. Days of Future Past? Like, yeah, an entire baseball stadium. Like, Magneto is the fucking shit. I love Magneto yeah. so much. Um, but yeah, so she saves all the X-Men, and then it, that's whenever the, like, final battle happens Mm -hmm. and it's not really a mega battle she just kind of like disintegrates a couple aliens yeah and then the final 
Jessica Chastain, yeah, bad she comes alien. Out and she's like, I'm gonna get you. And yeah, and then they, they fly into the sky, and that's whenever she says, um, Yeah, my emotions make me strong. And then they blow they, up. She explodes, and then she becomes the Phoenix. Yeah. She just becomes, and that's what I was saying that's different from the comics, because it's like in the comics, if she becomes the Phoenix, she will destroy everything. Like, it's not something mm-hmm. she can control. Uh, but in this movie, she. She controls her emotions and all that. And she literally becomes a fire bird. And, in space. Yeah, and I guess just flies around now. Yeah, because the very last scene... And I actually really liked the very last scene. I thought yeah. it was a great way to end... X-Men the whole universe, whole, yeah. Was just um, Magneto and Professor X at a cafe in Paris. and Just like Alfred, whenever he sees Bruce Wayne at I the mean, end of the Dark Knight spoilers. Sure, Dark Knight Rises. Like, I, I just thought it was really cool, and they're, like, playing a, one last game of chess, and then, like, it it pans up, or maybe not one last game of chess, but, like, you know, they're playing a game of chess mm-hmm. at a cafe in Paris, and then it pans up, and you see the phoenix flying in the sky. Yeah. So, so like, yeah, she I literally just... I guess she's just... now just, like, spe- phoenix space god. Yeah, she just flies like, around. And um, Beast is the new Professor X, yeah. sort of. He's... Yeah. He's the new, like, headmaster of the school. Yeah, yeah. Plays that yeah. role. Although, I, I've, I've got to say, I, I don't know what Fe- what Phoenix is doing up there. Like, is she just... Like, it doesn't matter. She's but it sounds like a pretty out. boring existence. Like, you're, you're very powerful. She's, apparently, she's just in serenity now. Like, apparently, she just is having a good old time flying you're, around. You're very powerful, but also, you're just, like, flying... In space as a gigantic <laughs> fire bird thing. Yeah. And pretty you're much. just like, we. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Uh, but I mean, it's a it's a good ending. I thought it was. Yeah, no, it's a good ending. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much the whole movie. And like, it's not as bad as people say. Yeah, I, I, I'm honestly not understanding why everyone is like. It's it's not perfect, but it, like sucks. none of the X Men movies are perfect. So yeah, it's like, I mean, I mean not perfect, but Logan. Logan's yeah, Logan's, Logan's a different type of thing. Like I don't like I said, that's not like an X Men movie. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's an X Men universe movie, but that's just Wolverine. But uh, it, it's really cool. Um, it's worth seeing, especially yeah. if you enjoyed some of the other X Men movies. Yeah, and then, I mean, I don't think New Mutants is ever happening. Yeah, and what what the fuck are they even going to do with that? Like, it's just... Yeah, it's just... It's, it'll just be another... I don't... I mean, I don't know what it is. It's supposed to be a horror movie. Hmm. Like, it's... I think it's, like, them. They're all trapped in, like... You know, what? like, where um, X-23 was made? Yeah. They're all trapped in a facility like that, and they're trying to get out, and it's supposed to be some kind of horror movie. Hmm. Um, and it's got Maisie Williams from Game of Thrones, and it's got, um... It, yeah. That's probably not gonna happen. It, it's got, uh, the one guy's brother from Stranger Things. I oh, that name. guy? Yeah, that guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it's got a few, like, s- s- kinda high-profile actors. Yeah. But, like... Every single time something happens, they're like, oh yeah, we're actually delaying the release of this movie by another, like, five months. It's kind of like Gambit. Yeah. Gambit has gone through, I'm like... I'm pretty sure Gambit's just done now. Oh, yeah, no, they ain't making that shit. Like, they, but they said for so long, they were like, yep, Channing Tatum Gambit, Gambit movie's still on the way. Yeah, like, Gambit, and then... Gambit is probably somewhere in production hell right now. I don't think it's happening. Like, yeah, I don't think uh, it's they, happening. They might either. as well just... New Mutants is somewhere in production hell right now. Deadpool is probably like the last remnant of the universe, which yeah. I think they're making a Deadpool 3. Or, like Maybe. I said, they might just reintroduce because Disney has said we're just introducing Ryan Reynolds' Deadpool into the MCU. Yeah. Which I think is a great way to do it. Mm-hmm. Um... But also, if they make a third Deadpool movie within, like, the, the Fox M- universe. I think so. it'd be funnier to do the third one in the MCU and just have him be like, what the fuck? Like, I just completely, like, <laughs> every one I know is no longer in existence. Like, yeah. I, I'm just completely 
Yeah. <laughs> in a new fucking place now. Like, that'd be funny. It, it'd be very, it'd be very interesting. The, they'll, sure. the, they'll find a way to do the, it. That just gives them shit to work with. Yeah. To make but some new if funny there's a third LOL Deadpool movie, jokes. I also think it would be funny to see what they do with, like, okay... Like, we are now all that's left of the Fox universe. Like, see mm-hmm. it, what they do. Because there was also supposed to be an X-Force movie. You remember that? Yeah. With, with like, it was going to have Deadpool, Cable, and mm-hmm. Domino. But it was also going to have, like, other actual, like... Comic book characters. Yeah. yeah. Not just the X-Force that was in Deadpool 2. Have, like, <laughs> Night Nighthawk or whatever. That Some all show. immediately died. Yeah, that shit Although was funny. I, I did it's... love that because they like teased it so much in the trailers. Yeah, and then everyone <laughs> just dies except the fucking normal guy. Named no, like... he dies too. Oh shit! But no, Deadpool comes back like when the very end when Deadpool gets his like time travel thing. He just like goes back and undoes a bunch oh, of shit. Like okay. he resurrects his wife and he saves Pete. He's like, Pete, go home. Oh, okay. Go home. But he doesn't save any of the other guys. I need to re-watch that because I saw it a while ago. Or when it came out, but I don't... There's a lot of shit I don't remember about it. I know, like, Terry Crews was one of them. And, like, mm-hmm. on Terry Crews' Instagram afterwards, he even, like, apologized. He was like, hey, but it was funny, though. <laughs> <laughs> like... Uh, so, yeah. An overall, X-Force movie would have been cool. Yeah, it could have been. Um, I think they really need to bring, like artists on that have like or that are genuinely going to try to do something different you know what I mean mm-hmm. for for the next round of superhero movies like yeah. the MCU is definitely not going to do that but uh, like it's like even the artists that they got on that were supposed to bring their specific vision it still feels like a Marvel movie it still has got that vibe yeah. it's like I'm really trying to see something fucking different and I think with that, I mean, in the MCU, there are a few things, like yeah. Guardians and Ragnarok, well, like, but like those, those are, don't really feel, like, that different. Really? Like, they still, no, not Guardians, to me. Not to me. They Guardians still, and Ragnarok feel they're, they're a lot different. Some of the best, but I don't know. It's all got a similar vibe to me. But anyways, so yeah, I think we're both feeling like a 6.5 to a 7. Yeah. Yeah, I'd it's say. enjoyable. It, it's it's worth seeing. I really just want to, like, Days of Future Past is always the one that I want to see the most, or rewatch yeah, the most. I, I mean, I've still only seen it once, so I'd love to go back and rewatch it. And I think that is, like, that is a genuinely really good movie. Like, if yeah. all X-Men movies kind of could have kept up with that same, mm-hmm. like, level, I think we'd still be looking at more X-Men movies going forward. Yeah, unless Disney just forced their will and just said, we're buying you, Fox. Yeah. It's, it's, resistance is futile. I will say, like, going into it, I was like, all right, this is like the last hoorah of the X-Men universe. Mm-hmm. So I was, I was very... waiting to see a trash-ass mm-hmm. movie, but, like, it yeah. just really wasn't. I was very, like, retrospective on, like, my experience, like, With growing the X-Men up movies? watching X-Men movies, you know? Yeah, yeah. Me too. So, I mean, that was cool. I think, yeah, six and a half, seven, maybe. Yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and say seven. Okay. Just, uh, But yeah, I guess we should, I'm thinking, do you want to end it with just like talking about what X-Men mutation we would want? Oh, yeah. Okay. So Does it have to be an existing one? They like, kind of have like, every fucking power, so yeah. it's like it's hard not to choose one. Okay, uh, so... Mine would be... It depends on if you want, like, power or practicality. Yeah. I think mine... So, and I'm pretty sure he's a mutant, too. But Franklin Richards... Oh, yeah. I would not want that. I would not want that at all. Really? He's like... Fuck no. He's literally, like... He's a god type. He's a Omega or Alpha... No, they're called Omega, Omega level mutant. Omega, but he's also the child of Sue Storm Sue. and Reed Richards. Yeah, yeah. And so he has like he has like two different sources of power combining, and he's, he's just like he's a whole nother fucking level. Like when he was like a child. How do you raise that child? 
That's the thing. It's like, even with like a low level, or it's like Jean Grey, it's like raising <laughs> a fucking psychic would just be like, this kind of well, ass. So, so for those of you who don't know who Franklin Richards is, he's just, I don't even know how to... Do, he's just God. He like, basically can rewrite reality to yeah. however he wants it to be. Yeah. And so usually, like, when he's, like, written about or talked about, it's about, like, him as, like, a kid. Yeah. Because it's, like... In in the original Days of Future Past, he's a grown adult in that. Mm-hmm. But he's, like, it's the Mutant Registration Act or whatever. Or all mutants are just being hunted in that universe. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah. I mean... That's you really want all of that power to rewrite reality? I mean, I wouldn't use it a lot. I wouldn't want to be born with it because if I was straight up like born and knowing I could do that, yeah, I would probably like. How Who do you knows? not just grow up be becoming like a spoiled brat totalitarian dictator? Yeah, like, but like if I was ten and I learned I could bend the will of the entire world towards my every need. You best believe that I would. Like, yeah. Because when you're that little, like, I, I work with campers. Mm-hmm. When you're that little, you don't understand that, like, oh, hey, other people exist. Like, yeah, yeah. Children you're very are all, selfish. like, sociopaths. Yeah, a little bit. Like, They're just selfish. Raising them, you just have to teach them that other people also Ma- yeah. exist and have feelings. Mm-hmm. But, like, if you are a child and you are just born with the ability to just rewrite all reality... So y'all can't tell me nothing. You never come to that realization. Mm-hmm. You're just like... So, so, but is that your choice? That would be my choice if I had to pick, like, a mutant power to have. See, I've never even, like, I wouldn't even want to be Superman or anything like that. Like, and if I was, I'd want to be, like, a low-level Superman. Because it's, like... I just don't want that much power. That's you don't way want that too much responsibility. Yeah, that too. Like <laughs> that's just a fucking lot. Um, but for me, I've always thought having Colossus's powers would be pretty cool. Cause like, I think that'd be awesome to turn metal. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then again, I'd also want to be able to fly. Oh, Blink! Actually, Blink from the comics. We've talked about her before. She she can just open portals. She was in Days of Future oh, Past. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. She can just open portals to wherever she wants. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to okay. go ahead and say that. That'd be pretty dope. That And uh, that's just practical as fuck. I think... You're like, damn, I'm wanting a, a Yiddo from a Greek island right now. Boom, open up a portal, go buy one, come back to your fucking house. No passport required. You don't need a car, you don't need anything. Like, that's... that's I think if fun. I was going with practicality, I would go... Probably with Mystique's powers. Yeah. Although I don't know, I'm not super aware of the extent of her powers. Is she? She like, can just turn into anybody, pretty much. Anybody, but she's not straight up shapeshifter. Like she can't. Like, I think it's only humans. Only humans. Uh, I don't know, because I think my number one power has always been shapeshifting, and everyone else is like, "Oh, what about flying?" And I'm like, "Shapeshift into something that can fly." But yeah, no, that's like Plastic Man. Plastic Man can, like, turn into a fucking airplane and then fly. Yeah, but Plastic Man is different. He's also, like, Mr. Fantastic. Yeah. It, that's different. But, like, that type of shape-shifting, that's what you're talking about. Yeah. Where you can literally turn into anything. Yeah. But Mystique, it's strictly just people. Also, another thought I've had with shape-shifting is, like, if you were to shape-shift into a bird, would you just, like, keep... Would you keep your mind? Yeah. Or would I mean, you, you have to. But, like, what if you just, like, had the ability to shapeshift? You shapeshift into a bird. Now you're just a stupid fucking bird. Well, then that would be a dumbass power. Else. But that's clearly not how it works. It, I mean, we don't know how shapeshifting would work in reality. Well, oh, fucking, that shit's not real. <laughs> um, so, is Mystique your choice, or what? I'm still gonna stick with Franklin Richards. Okay, so Colin just pretty much wants to be God. I want to be God. And I just want to open up some portals. I can open up portals with my god powers. I don't give a fuck, man. <laughs> That's fine. Do you do you? I'm gonna be getting myself some fucking crepes in 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 Paris. All right. She trying to be crepe. She trying to be crepe. She want to be Cardi. Uh, yeah. Um. So yeah, I think. How far are we into it right now? We are. Hour and thirteen minutes. Okay. Um. So we, it's a good stopping point. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, like I said, just go check out the movie. It's not as bad as people say. 
Yeah, no, that's basically my that that's that's my takeaway too. Just mm-hmm. Oh, yo, See can it. I shout out my thrifting page? On shout, here? shout out your thrifting page, yeah. Go okay, ahead. so I like opened up on Instagram and Depop. Uh, but you can find the Depop on the Instagram. Uh, it's called Yen, Y-E-N, period, thrifting, period, T-X. And uh, I just post thrifted clothes, that some that I just have that I'm trying to get rid of, and some that I just like go uh, to thrift shops and get. So yeah, if you're interested in buying some clothes, and I try to price shit pretty pretty reasonably. Yeah. So like, I got some cool stuff on there. Go check it out, and uh, thank you for listening. Yeah. No. Oh, one thing. So, I do also want to say is um, give us five stars on iTunes. Oh yeah, That's, five stars on iTunes. Yeah, I think we're we're gonna start saying that just from now on yeah, it'll help like, us out and always yeah. just if you if you really enjoy our podcast and are and have listened to like all the episodes uh j- and if you have any friends that have similar interests or that you know that they would kind of fuck with it uh, don't send be them afraid to shout us out be, be the shameless plug listen you know? the goal whenever we get to open up that damn patreon I want a Patreon. Do you understand? Yeah, me, whenever listener? we get enough people listening to this to where we can get a Patreon going, then we're just going to kick our feet up and just be recording podcasts. We'll record yeah. five in a day. I don't know. I might get a little burnt <laughs> out from that. Yeah, no, probably not. But five. like one, one per day, that, that wouldn't be Oh, no, we could do that. At all. We could do that. Yeah. Also, so... Um, we've got a little bit of like different audio quality now because yeah, this is our first time recording on these new mics we got. Yeah, so I mean, if if y'all hear anything weird, just like let us know. I mean, personally, we think these sound pretty good. Yeah, but yeah, uh, let if us you want know. us to go back to the snowball, let us know. Let us know what you think. <laughs> these cost a lot of money. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, our ASMR. Yeah, our ASMR game is about to be off the charts. Our ASMR. This is a classic. I think I did this on like the first episode. Let's see. That was me swallowing water. That was Dre swallowing water. <laughs> mm. Very it kinda, relaxing. It kind of went down my throat too fast <laughs> for a second. But uh, yeah, thank you for listening. All right, yeah. You have a Hit beautiful day. Hit that like button. Subscribe. Drop five stars. Yeah. And join our Minecraft server. Join our Minecraft server.